Hi, James. Thanks for making time to meet with us today. It's great to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah, really glad to be here. So, look, James, let's get straight into it. I mean, we're really enjoying working with you as part of our mentor program at uh, ABSM, very much encouraging young composers to find their way into writing and working with us in music education. Let's just start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? So um, I'm a composer of contemporary classical music. Um, I live in the Bedfordshire area. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my music, I am really inspired by art. I've been um, finding a lot of inspiration in um, what's going on around us. So for instance, recently I wrote a piece that references climate change and another piece was about social justice. So my music is really focused on the here and now, um, as well as kind of other things which um, take my fancy. I'm a kind of a bit of a musical magpie in that way. Um, one thing people might not know about me is that I'm a twin, one of two. <laughs> and um, he also plays an instrument, he plays drums. Um, my main instrument is the piano. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's kind of a- That's great. Introduction I was gonna to say, going on the family connection, do you find yourself playing together? Do you, do you play together with your, with your twin? We do actually. Yeah. We've been in like a few bands together, but I think with a lot of really close siblings, we argue terribly. So yeah, no. it's not the easiest working relationship. I can uh, relate to but, that. Yeah, my, yeah, my brother, so. my brother plays uh, plays a saxophone and the clarinet, and I'm a flute player and a keyboard player. And yeah, we, we enjoy playing, but we have our moments of uh, disagreement yeah. as well as other. But it's all good fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to come back to some of those themes around kind of being a composer inspired by the here and now, because I think that's really interesting. But James, I'm asking this knowing it's a tricky question, but if I were to turn on the radio or click on a Spotify link or whatever platform of choices, how would I know that I was listening to a piece of your music? What's your fingerprint? What's your DNA when it comes to being a composer? Uh, I think it's a really difficult question to answer. I see myself as a composer that's driven by concept and so for instance titles for me are so important a lot of the sounds that um, come into my imagination are really responses to things and so because I respond to so many different topics in my music the sounds are all very different as well but I think one thing I'm really interested in is kind of this single-minded focus in music and knowing kind of how to allow the ear to follow what you want it to in, in your music. And also I really enjoy um, the possibilities of rich harmony in music. And so I often will uh, play with that in, in the things that I write. But I like that idea of kind of, you know, taking, taking a listener on that journey with you and, you know, do you take them through at a certain pace? Do you stop them? Do you start them? Do you go left and right? Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting concept. I also like the idea of titles. Again, I'm, I, I, I like titles for a piece. I think they speak. I happen to like really one, I like one word titles. I read a few pieces just called play or shout. Um, give us a title, give yeah. us a couple of titles of your uh, pieces, James, just to give us a flavor. Yeah, sure. So um, the piece I'm writing at the moment is called Jacob's Ladder, and it's based on a kind of biblical story of these angels going up and down this ladder. So it paints this kind of scene of, of heaven. Um, the other piece I wrote just before this, which was for piano, um, is called Water Dance. And that thinks about kind of the movement of water. And uh, but also in the background of that piece, I think about climate change a little bit as well so there's a couple yeah. of, of titles no thanks it's where language is really powerful isn't it as soon as you say a title i've immediately find myself thinking what does that sound like what does it go mm. you know um i i think you know it's, it's interesting you know we're hoping that anyone uh listening to this and watching this um might also themselves be inspired to think about i'm gonna have a go at composing i'm gonna go have a go at making music um, mm. How did you get started? You know, you described yourself at the top of this. I'm a composer. I'm a maker. How, how did you get started on that journey? Well, it was, a, it was an interesting journey because I'm not from a musical family. No one in my family plays an instrument. Um, they, they love music and we, we had music playing in the house all the time, but um, no making of music really happened in my house. So it was only when I went to a new high school, I was in my teens and um, I got some singing lessons and the teacher said, please 
um, learn another instrument so you can understand more of the theory element. And so my parents bought me a keyboard and I just started to play and I was just hooked with the kind of being just curious about music and just making things up. And I didn't see myself as a composer, but from really from that moment on, I have been a composer because I'm just, uh, you know, drawn to uh, create really. So it, that's how it all started. And so from that point on, I would show things that I'd written to teachers uh, I would enter little competitions and perform my work um, and then it, it led up to me eventually studying at the Royal Academy of Music where I really uh, learned that there is a craft behind being a composer. Well, so. Thanks for that. I, again, a couple of things from that one part. You've just hit on one of my, I suppose, my favourite words, uh, curiosity and that sense of Again, for any performer or teacher, uh, just actually wondering what's underneath the music, you know? So sometimes we, we all do it, I do it. You, you put a piece of music on the stand and you, and you perform it and you play it. And actually it's really good every now and then to stop and think, well, let's just think about that phrase, that harmony, where the inspiration might have come from this composer. Any advice there for a performer? You know, how, how do you go about being more curious, James? Well, I think um, music really is a language and it works in a very different way from any other art form. And when we're often drawn to a piece of music that we're performing, but it's in, the, the interesting question to ask is why do you love this piece of music? Why are you enjoying um, this particular passage of music? What is it about the music that is so kind of um, fascinating or wonderful? And often if you go into the nuts and bolts, you'll find that there is something specific about it which makes that special. And really as a composer, that's what we're often doing is we're hearing things in our head and we're playing things that are, have something inherently beautiful or special about them. And we collect these sounds and fuse them into, into a, a kind of whole thing. And so as performers, I think it's really important to not shy away from the theoretical aspect of it, because the more you understand, the more you can communicate. Yep. I hear that. If you really understand and own the music, you stand on the stage and present it, you're right inside it and you mm. tell your story through that piece. I'm interested, you know, you said, you said earlier in this chat that you're, you're very much motivated by and inspired by the themes of now. Um, you find yourself, you know, you, you mentioned climate change, you mentioned protest. Um, are you finding yourself on a daily basis hunting around inspired by themes and news articles and what's important? Or are you more selective about what you uh, choose to write about? I think, um, I don't know if I've used this term magpie before, but I'm very much like that, that if something catches my ear, I'll make a little note of it and write it down. Um, and maybe I'll come back to that idea and, and create something musically. But I don't really go out and seek unless yeah. I've been given a commission. And I think, what can this piece be? And then I'll start to think. So I think um, but I'm just very much aware of what's going on around me in the, in the world. And I want to really connect with audiences and talk about things through my music, which actually resonate with people. Yeah. And um, so there's a kind of... A, a, a sense that I want to be true to myself as an artist, but also really make things which actually relate to lived experience. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's, uh, you know, that role of music and of the composer to make comment and to get people to think and offer a different perspective mm. on what we're all experiencing is a really powerful part of what we do as artists. Um, yeah, I think one thing I would say on that is I think a really interesting role of us as composers is, is that we can be a catalyst for conversation. We can start conversations about things. We don't have to have all of the answers. And really music is, in, in many cases, completely non-verbal. So it's, it's not about um, telling people what we believe or anything. It's really about starting a dialogue and really music can communicate the emotion behind things. So I think that's where music is more powerful because we can say things through our music, which can connect directly to, you know, the inner self in a way that just talking can't. It's interesting. Your answer there is a really yeah. 
uh, a useful segue, I think, into talking maybe more specifically about the work you're doing with us now at ABRSM, because, you know, we've got you on this mentor program, uh, as I said right at the top, we're enjoying working with you and your five colleagues, a great, a great team. We set you this first task of writing a piece for grade one piano. And uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about how, how did you find that task? What was the challenge of that? And uh, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I really had a good time writing the piece. I teach um, a lot of, um, of the ABRSM syllabus for piano. And so I'm really, really familiar uh, with it from a kind of teaching side. But I had no idea of looking at it from the other side, really, of being the composer, being the person who is thinking about inspiring people through the music, but also um, addressing some of the more technical things that help people improve their playing as well. And I think those are the two um, pillars of writing educational music that I've kind of um, found for myself that I'm interested in. So it's, it was a really fascinating thing to think, what would my students enjoy? What would push them that little bit further? What would fit nicely alongside the other repertoire at grade one? And yeah, but I think the main thing is really, I wanted people to have fun with the music. And so that kind of guided me through what I eventually um, decided to put together. Great, thank you. Oh, well, we look forward to, uh, to, to hearing the piece. I, I'm interested as a composer, how it, how it feels that, you know, if you write something um, with us at ABSM and it finds its way onto a syllabus, it's potentially something particular like a grade one piano piece. It's going to be performed by people in any of 93 countries around the world. There could be <laughs> hundreds of thousands of performances of that piece that you've just written. How does that feel? Because, you know, I suppose the cliched idea is that composers get used to getting one performance of the piece is good, but potentially here it's going around the globe. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic privilege to be in that position to have so many people um hear your music but also spend all of that time learning the piece so for me i just feel really honored um i would feel honored to have um people around the world play the music it would be a bit surreal i think um <laughs> but you know it's it's just a wonderful thing to kind of unite all of us with with music so um i hope i would i hope they'd enjoy what i'm what i'm sharing yeah it's great i mean i think it's one of the things that certainly motivates many of us uh, who work uh, with ABRSM is, is actually that global stage that we work on and uh, very interested about mm. what's common uh, and familiar around uh, people who learn music around the globe. It's more interesting than what's different often, you know, and actually what unites people. And um, I was going to, the second of my tricky questions, James, uh, just, just so you know it's coming, is that, you know, on the programme we've got a set series of commissions, working for piano, next is going to be writing for saxophone. Um, but if you could have any commission from ABRSM to write for any instrument at any level, what, what would be on your wish list? What could we, uh, what could would most entice you with? I'm really open to write for any instrument. I think they're all so individual and it's really exciting to um, get to know an instrument again, because when you compose, you, you're constantly getting to know these instruments again when you start to write for them. So I think that's fascinating. I personally would, I've just written this grade one piece. I would love to write something um, toward the upper um, end of the, the spectrum for grade seven or grade eight, because I think that would just be a really great technical challenge for me, but also it would be great to um, be very ambitious in the in the level of um, of music that I would would be writing for. I think if I had to choose an instrument, um, I'm writing a piece that includes the harp at the moment, and I think it's such a gorgeous instrument. Uh, so yeah. I would love to write a piece uh, for harp. I think as well. Thanks for that. That's really that's a that's a that's a great sound world you've already created. And I guess we're interested. You know, we know. You know, there are various instruments that are at any one time more popular than others, or we see more people taking grades in and actually contemporary, really uh, relevant music for the harp, for example, would be very welcome. So, yeah, thanks for that. And we'll we'll come knocking at your door. Um, <laughs> I think, James, going, going back to one of the motivations here is about encouraging more people, um, not just more young people, more people who are interested in music to think about making music themselves. Um, 
what advice would you give to someone who's listening to this that thinks actually I'd like to start doing some composing I'd like to start making some of my music not just performing other people's music how would you recommend they could get started well I think making music is as simple as sitting in front of a piano holding your instrument or even just closing your eyes and letting your imagination run wild really creating music doesn't have to be some formal thing where it's all written down or where it's presented to a teacher or heard in a grand concert hall it can be just something you do in your spare time um, to entertain yourself to kind of just really explore your imagination like you would sit down and write a story or anything else that is what music can can be like so I think um, really my advice is just to go ahead and do it don't um, think you have to learn anything specific but just get stuck in I would say once you're a little bit down that path of enjoying creating music then the education and the exposure to lots of the music making that's been going on for centuries is so enriching and for me it's really important to um, kind of surround myself with all of the fantastic music from centuries past from this country and all around the world because I feel incredibly inspired um, and I learned so much from composers of the past. Thanks, thanks for that James. I, I won't uh, do it in injustice but that theme of actually just get on and have a go at it uh, sit at the piano, get your instrument and start making seems to be really, really important to me. And also that sense of you've talked about surrounding yourself with 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 music from from the, the present and the past. Um, we live in an age now, don't we, where we're surrounded by so much music, so much is available to us. Um, mm. uh, give us a flavour of some of the, the music that you're engaging with at the moment and uh, is inspiring you. What, what's on your playlist at the moment right now, James? <laughs> I listen to a huge variety of stuff. Um, and of course, classical music is the main thing which I listen to because it's the music I write, it's the music I've studied, and it's the music I'm really passionate about. Um, a piece I was just listening to a second ago was Malcolm Arnold's Fifth Symphony, which is really beautiful and really just a fascinating piece. Um, but on my, I would say on my playlist, I go from rock to um, electronic music to ambient music. I'm a real big fan of um, an ambient um, composer called Seller, who is, who is great. And uh, just trying to think now, there's so, there's so much music. I, um, yeah. I really like film music as well. I find that really fascinating because I'm really into, into movies as well. So I try and keep up with, with that side of, of music making as well. Um, so I, I don't really close doors to different genres. I'm, I'm very open to um, explore. Right. And we know as a result of that, Seller is going to get lots of uh, downloads and clicks starting with me. I'm going to go and have a listen. So uh, brilliant. Luke James, it's been, a, it's been a real pleasure talking to you today. Thanks again for your time. And uh, we're looking forward to working with you throughout the rest of the mentor program in the coming months and very much looking forward to seeing your trajectory continue as a composer. Thanks again for your time. Thanks for having me. Thank you.